Hey, welcome to Gold Scratch and uh, welcome back uh, subscribers and welcome to new viewers and uh, hope you're enjoying my channel. And in the, if you've watched the previous uh, two or three videos, I've been talking about a plan to uh, start a new project, which is a build of a 350 uh, cubic inch small block Chevy engine on a budget. And it's the most popular engine in the world, so it's a natural for one for us to use. And my, my good friend Mike Kimball is going to be the lead on this project. Uh, Mike has started out to be a customer of mine. I built a couple of Pontiac GTOs for him and uh, GTO engines, 400s. And he's become my producer and he's responsible for the improvement in the quality of my videos. So, so the plan is, and you've heard my discussion before about planning, and before I forget, if you haven't subscribed, please do that now. It really helps us a lot and makes it worthwhile to work on new videos. And we plan to have a probably succession of at least three or four videos on this subject. So, and if you listen to my discussion about planning, one of the statements that I've made is you got to do the thinking well in advance, plan, 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 write it down, put it on paper, make sure you've thought of everything. So in this case, uh, going back to my sort of corporate life, uh, typically a big project starts off with a project definition. So the definition of this project, and I'm going to read it, is to build a reliable 350 cubic inch street engine to make 375 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque for under $2,500 USD. And I'm using USD. We're in Canada, but 90% of my viewers are in the U.S. So we're going to work on U.S. And then actually uh, Mike's going to talk about the budget and it's got a Canadian conversion too. So not hard to figure out what the difference is. So we're going to get into that. We've got lots of documentation to come. Mike's going to step in here in a minute and, uh, and, and join me. And he's going to describe the details that we're going to use to accomplish that objective comes out to about $7 a horsepower USD and this is the raw material obviously there's lots of work to do it hasn't even been cleaned up yet but we got it disassembled we've done some major checks so we kind of know what we're into and uh, we're going to go from there as I mentioned uh, Mike Kimball is the lead on this project and he's done all the budgeting and the research and the procurement of parts and services that we require and so I'm going to let him take the lead on going through the budget. The, a budget bill, the most important thing about a budget bill is the budget itself. And so a lot of detail work's gone into that. And so I'll let Mike uh, tell you all the process that he's gone through to get to the point where we're at today. So, so we started with this 350 block here. And uh, if, if you do have one to start with, good. If not, you can probably find one off Craigslist or Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Um, this is for 70 Monte Carlo, uh, it's a 354 volt block. So we're going to use this as our donor and it's not included in the budget because we assume that we already have it. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put a screenshot up of the budget here and, uh, it's a fairly de detailed budget, but that doesn't mean that it works for everybody. So you're going to have to, you know, make your own decisions there. Um, we did our best to reuse as many of the original components as we can. And the reason is to stay within budget. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. Because in a lot of cases, it's easy to just replace things um, because it's easy. But, you know, if you put a little bit of time and effort in and you clean things up and you mark and measure and you can reuse a lot of the parts. And, and we are here. We had a decision to make with cylinder heads. Uh, they're 1970 041 heads. So very similar to a camel hump, but they do have the accessory mounting holes. Um, I ported them myself. Uh, we were lucky enough to have a good friend, Austin Ward, um, assist with that and put them on the flow bench. They flow about 230 CFM. We kept the 194, 150 valves. And so we're not going to be held back by the heads on this. If anything, it'll be camshaft and Al can speak better to the camshaft. And if you've watched previous videos, then uh, you'll know that we're in the ballpark of the camshaft. I used David Visard's formula. Um, I applied it. It seemed to work pretty well. The camshaft that we're going to use is a Crower 00256. It's actually a circle track camshaft and it's uh, got a pretty quick intake ramp. The exhaust is a little lazier. Um, 
as some of you know, if you're going to take out a, a lobe on a camshaft, it's usually an exhaust lobe, so um, that's okay. We're going to use, it's a hydraulic flat tappet, and we're going to use good GM Delphi lifters with the hardened foot. So um, it, a lot of camshaft failures out there with hydraulic flat tappets. A lot of people want to go roller. It's just not in the budget for this, and it's not in the budget for a lot of people. So for 500 bucks, I can buy a good set of lifters, a good camshaft, and that's how I'm going to go about it rather than spending 1500 or so to retrofit this with a roller because it's not in the budget. And for a lot of people doing this in their backyard like me, it's just not. Uh, what do you think, Al? Yeah, that's for sure, Mike. I mean, uh, if, if you're on a budget build, uh, roller cam is a tough step to take. $1,500 is a low number if you're talking Canadian dollars. But time, if you have to use link bar lifters, and a roller cam, and it's not just that. When you get into that, then you need a way to retain the roller cam, and then you need a thrust bearing behind your timing gear, and you need a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you put a roller cam in right off the bat, you don't even have push rods that are even close. So with this cam, I've got about eight sets of push rods, the stock push rods. I'm sure we'll find a set that'll work. If you put a roller in it, I'm sure we won't be able to find a set that'll work because they're going to be way different. And so. Roller, if you get done with a roller cam in Canadian dollars, it's well over 2000 bucks by the time you make the total conversion. So this thing wouldn't be called a budget build if we were going to use a roller cam. So, No, and it's all about budget. And I want to make sure that it's relatable to most people out there. There's lots of engine builders on YouTube and they have unlimited budgets and resources and, and know-how. But this is really geared towards guys like me doing this in their backyard that are trying to save money, that probably have kids in sports and, you know, a mortgage and a career. So uh, if this can help anybody, then, you know, we're happy to do it. Maybe we can do some more budget builds in the future that can kind of help people uh, show that they can do it too because... There's lots of good YouTube videos out there. Al's got a bunch of them now. This is actually video 100 for Al, so kind of a, a big milestone Thanks, for him. Yeah. Thanks. He's over 3,000 cool. subscribers now, That's so cool. he's doing well, and he's got lots of knowledge, and uh, he's happy to share it. So I take advantage of it as much as I can. Um, lots of other guys out there. Our good friend Daryl Waters, he helps, he helps with the dyno, the tuning. Uh, he's a good resource. Austin Ward, is, uh, as mentioned, is kind of Elgin County's best kept secret, I think. He's kind of a genius in his own right, so uh, he helps out. He helped uh, assemble the heads. The heads are all assembled, they're ready to go. Uh, we just gotta get the block cleaned up, hone it, and uh, put the pistons in. Now, staying out of the machine shop was important, and I've had some very big machine shop bills myself in, uh, in the past, uh, fairly recently. Um, so when it came time to choose between reusing the stock pistons, we chose to go with a new piston with a floating rod. And the reason is I didn't want to pay a machine shop to hang the rods because as soon as you do that, they're going to want to resize them, whether they need to be or not, and you're going to end up with a big machine shop bill. And you had one $570 just to hang the... Just to hang rods and, and uh, recondition the rods and hang pistons. So, so for Mike, less than that... Mike bought, bought the rods with floating pins so we can assemble them ourselves for $400 or so, I think it was. And, and they're brand new rods and they got ERP rod bolts. So they're better rods than the rods they had. $541. Yeah. So, so it's cheaper. And, that's, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a bargain and you got, you know, brand new rods and not rods that are 50 years old. So that's another nice thing to know. So, and we're going to weigh everything and check it on the gram scale and I'm not going to balance it. That's another cost that there's going to be a lot of critics that say you absolutely have to, and we're going to do our best not to. We're going to, we're going to weigh everything and measure everything and, double and triple check and if you've watched Al's video on planning then you'll know that that's where what we're going to do here. Just to comment on balancing Mike, if you're building an engine that's going to go 5,000 rpm once in a while, it'll probably work harder on the dyno than it's going to work in Mike's car and so if it's going to cruise around at 2,500 rpm and hit 5,000 rpm occasionally and it's a small block 350 you do not need to balance it. I'm telling you that right now as long as we know the parts are compatible and work with each other it's not necessary and it's a it's a big expense and it's just not necessary for an engine like this so so from here the next video will be you'll see some of the assembly july 22nd 
which is just about three weeks from today. We're going to dyno this engine at Daryl Waters, and we're going to hope to make 375 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque. I think it's going to do pretty well for torque. Uh, we're going to be 9.9 .9 to 1 compression. Uh, we're going to be pretty high um, for the uh, cast heads. Uh, it's probably pushing the limits of it a little bit, but we're going we're gonna to manage that with, uh, with additives. And I, if I have to, um, I will use uh, aviation fuel um, just for the lead content in it. The heads don't have hardened seats. We could have used aluminum heads. Al's got some here. I've got a set of Vortec heads. We could have used that. Uh, the aluminum heads would have broke the budget. The Vortec heads, that's another issue. Uh, we'd be limited to lift. So, and, and I didn't want to use center bolt heads. Um, I wanted to stick with the original, uh, the original setup for the 1970 Monte Carlo. I want to stick with the vintage of it. Uh, it's not something that's going to be driven a lot. I'm not really going to have to worry about pound and valve seats out of it. It's not going to see a lot of driving. Uh, it's going to have four-speed manual transmission. Uh, I haven't decided on the rear end uh, gear ratio yet. Probably a 373. Um, and if you've watched the previous video to this, I think that's going to work pretty well. Uh, I'll probably use a Muncie uh, M20. So I think that's what Al's got in his uh, 70 or 68 Camaro here. I think it's going to work pretty good with his camshaft. But uh, basically just trying to give, uh, give some credit to the previous videos here and, and stick with, uh, with Al's message of building street engines. Just a comment on, on the fuel, Mike, 10 to 1 compression. Uh, how we'll determine that? We'll validate everything that we've calculated on by doing a compression test when the engine's put together. And if we're anywhere near 180 PSI or less, you don't have to even think about using anything but pump gas, it'll be fine. And the other thing, Mike's kind of touched on it, the same issues as always, reliability, maintainability, good low end power. A Monte Carlo is probably close to 4,000 pounds. It's a heavy car. It's not a light car. So the camshaft that Mike's chosen, you can look up the specs, he's given you the number already. It's not a radical cam at all. And it's gonna have nice idling sound and good off throttle response and just make a nice streetcar, which is the objective of really every engine that we build out of Gold Scratches. So watch for uh, future videos. We're going to try to stick with, uh, try to get one out a week on this, just so that people can follow along. And like I said, if, if it can help somebody build one in their backyard, you know, we're happy to, uh, to kind of show you how we're doing it and going about it. And that doesn't mean it works for everybody, because everybody is going to do it a little bit different, and that's okay. And you know what, I got thick skin. It doesn't bother me that somebody doesn't do it the same way I am. And uh, I'm not gonna do it the same way they are, and that's fine. But we're gonna do it to the best of our ability. And uh, you know, YouTube is, uh, you're, you're opening yourself up for criticism, and I'm okay with that. Some people might not like it, some people might. And uh, the important thing is that somebody might learn from it. I know I've learned lots from YouTube. Uh, there's some really smart guys on there. David Vizard, um, Weingartner. Uh, even uh, there's a My Vintage Iron channel. He's got some good information on Chevrolet heads. He actually picks the 041 casting as the best um, as, the, uh, as the cast iron heads. So happy with that choice. But, you know, if, if somebody can learn, then that's kind of the whole point for doing this, really. So thanks, Mike. So in subsequent videos, we've just started today with the project definition. And just to say that again, we're going to try to build a nice street, reliable, maintainable motor engine for that makes 375 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds of torque for $2,500 USD or less, or about $3,000 Canadian or less. That's the objective. Now, as we go through in subsequent videos, we will define all the next stages. So the project definition is where you start, and then you start doing your planning and procurement uh, getting the price and materials, um, putting it all together, doing the calculations, uh, com the dynamic compression, static compression, cylinder pressure. You need to know all that stuff for you at least be able to predict all that stuff before you do anything. And then the next thing is you get your raw material and you start tearing it down and do all the uh, uh, checks and assessments, inspections, measure. We've already mic'd every journal on the crankshaft and every part that we're going to use has been measured already all that stuff before you end up taking the next step. So 
We'll lead you through all the steps until we got her on the dyno and we're pulling the throttle back. And, and we'll be transparent because not everything's going to go perfectly. And I've already had a situation uh, changing from press-in to screw-in studs. Uh, I cracked one of the stud bosses. And uh, luckily, uh, I was really lucky that my dad was able to, uh, to cast weld it and make a, make a professional repair on it. Because if not, I probably would have had to break the budget and go with a different set of heads. So that's something that can happen. And uh, whether that's due to inexperience or 53-year-old uh, cast iron, I don't know. But uh, that's another thing that, you know, I guess you can consider when you're doing that. If you want to go through the trouble of uh, going to a machine shop to switch from pressing to screwing studs. So you've already heard me use the term reality YouTube, and that's what it is. We will show you the good, the bad, and the ugly. It'd be nice if everything goes well and you just smack the parts together and we turn on the channel and we're just tightening the last bolt and starting her up. But if anybody out there is watching this has built an engine, you know it doesn't go like that. There's a lot of things that happen along the way. You run into all kinds of problems, all kinds of risks, and you've got to resolve those while you're putting it together. Don't get it together and wake up in the middle of the night and wonder whether you did it right. You've got to make sure you do that along the way and we will lead you through that process in subsequent videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. That does that helps Al's channel out. He's trying to grow it. So if you can do that, might might uh, might find its way to somebody else that wants to see it. Thanks for watching Gold Scratch, and watch out for future videos. The next time you see this, it'll be a lot cleaner, and we'll be in the process of uh, starting to assemble it. So thanks for watching Gold Scratch.